Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Live. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. Right, to support the channel there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they are live and there's also a PayPal, Patreon and crypto link in the info box below the video. Most importantly, if you'd like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the nature of Earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected. And if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show on social media. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please share the show on Facebook and Twitter. And one last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth debate. Now we are joined by Righteous Force, Tenth Man, Chocolate Sane, Paul Hall and Quantum Eraser, along with a whole bunch of people in Discord. So welcome one and all. Good morning. Hello. Very good Friday morning. Hello. Good morning. QE's up early this morning. Happy Friday the 13th. Shut up. Shut up. Might get some Jason Huey. Voorhees reruns. QE already tells somebody to shut up. <laughs> QE's right. up early because chocolate possibly. milk was served early. Good morning, Arwen. Oh. oh. Friday for those of you watching live. Saturday for those of you watching on Nathan Oakley 1980. Let's do some housekeeping. Any signs of a physical geometric earth curve edge? No. Sorry. Uh, no, but I've been uh, trying to use the I've been trying to use the refraction simulator to find it and I can't I've yet to find it. Hey Bev. Hey uh, teaching, teaching otherwise. otherwise. Oh, I've got an echo there. Teaching otherwise is apparently um child abuse if you didn't know. Teaching otherwise of what? The earth curve. Saying there isn't any earth curve. Yeah, yeah. Teaching children that uh, level is a straight line on a horizontal plane is uh, child abuse, apparently. According to who? Uh, fight the Flat Earth. According to yeah. Fight the Flat Earth, is he yeah. the, the education secretary in this country now? It, <laughs> he's, um, he's making public statements that that's the case, yeah. He's a retard. Certifiable. Well, I, would, I, would, I would agree with him. <laughs> yeah. He's a retard. There he is, Brenda. She said he's a retard, and Brenda says, I would agree with him. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're well, thinking he's yeah, a we... retard isn't, isn't the salient fact. I do think that teaching very, very children young. flat earth would, is, would amount to child abuse, yeah. Really? Well, you're yeah, a retard. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Uh, I've, destroyed you, in, I've yeah. destroyed you in every debate. Just, yeah, you're a retard. So, so yeah. Ben Hobbs? Is big of a piece of food, Whoopi. Like spider, no need. That's no what need. Saying. Hold on. We have any other reasons. Why, Brenda? Why? Um, because you're you're handicapping their, their future education and, and preventing them from understanding the world <laughs> around them. It... it you know, <laughs> flat Earth destroys people's lives. Flat Earth is you're a retard. Oh, well That's what your problem right. is. All right, besides a baseless assertion, what have you actually got to justify that statement, Brenda? I just told you, teaching children lies is abusive to them. It ne it neglects their oh, education. Well, I, Brenda, which lie? You said it it re restricts their understanding of the world. That's what you said. It limits yes, their education. Yes, yes. It, it's a, it's a so lie. Can you expand on the oh, I'm hoping you'll expand on your description that it limits their capability of understanding the world and limits their education. Can you explain those two, please? Uh, yes, because you're teaching them falsehoods about the world and bad reasoning, bad science. So it, it limits oh come on, for instance, you don't even know what science is. Give us a for instance. Yeah, exactly. Can you qualify these statements with an example? C can I basically? just yeah? Can I just state that it was level is a straight line on a horizontal plane? That was where Brenda jumped in, saying that that was uh, child abuse. Is that right, Brenda? 
Well, that would be that would be a bad definition, wouldn't it? Because that's not what the <laughs> word level means, is bad it? Definition. What okay. do you mean? It's definition. Level means perpendicular okay. to the surface yeah. of the earth. That's what level they means. Look no, it doesn't. Yeah, um, it actually does. I get to respond to her. Go ahead. They could, look it, they could look it up in their English class. So I don't understand how this is a qualification for it in any way, limiting their understanding of the world or limiting their ability to be educated. It doesn't qualify that statement in any way, shape, or form, Brenda. So, so far, big fat fail for your baseless assertion. Uh, because like you, for instance, you can't understand the difference between concepts and the things that concepts refer to. Because you are uh, <laughs> conceptually you are conceptually crippled by your belief mm -hmm. in the flat earth. Conceptually crippled. Yeah, you are mentally Why crippled. Is this turned into Wait, sorry, I don't need to hear it four more times. I heard. So why is this turned into an ad hominem attack on me rather than a description of how this would in any way qualify as child abuse or limit the education capacity of a child or diminish their ability to be educated? Because it, you haven't qualified cripples, because it cripples the child intellectually. It's another baseless assertion. You haven't given us a for instance. What do you mean a for instance? You've been... You give a, I've given you a qualification <laughs> why the statement's been made. Can you, yeah, I'm going to need to talk without interruption, Brenda. When you talk through me, it demonstrates you're not listening. You've asked a question that I'm attempting to answer. So try and be patient and not talk when I talk. Thank you. The Bev's given you a qualification for the justification by your own side to claim child abuse. He gave you a specific example about defining level example you've spewed out a few more basis assertions and attacked me personally that doesn't qualify a lack of ability to be educated at all okay are you finished now yeah we want an example support your claims well, don't be a village idiot well if you teach your children the basic concepts that you teach about flat earth that child will be intellectually crippled because they will lack... Like what? The, they will... The baseless version, oh. Brenda. Brenda, oh, I'm going to kick you out if you just keep... That, okay, Stop that, talking. Stop. I'm talking. The host. That means you're not. So, Brenda, you've just continually spewed baseless assertions without giving any cowbell, any qualification. A for instance, in quantum erasers terms... So we'd need you to actually back what you're saying with an example. I've tried to help you along with Bev's example because he gave a specific detailed description of level and then was told that would be child abuse if you told it to children. Your response to that was that's a bad definition because like in the dictionary, they're going to have bad and good written above these definitions. No, that's nonsensical. So you're yet to qualify your baseless assertions and you're making more and then attacking me personally. So... Do you have anything, Brenda, or is this the end? Can we move on with other housekeeping questions and accept that this is definitely not child abuse beyond the baseless assertions of village idiots that don't qualify their claims? Well, an example then, a qualification of the claim, would be teaching children that gravity, it doesn't exist, cripples them intellectually because gravity does exist. It is a fact that everybody knows teaching okay, children can you show that... It? Teaching uh, children uh, that Sorry, sorry. sorry, this is a debatable subject. So, can you show me gravity if it exists, please? I'd like to... Yeah, yeah, gravity is the effect. It's a phenomenon, which is the effect of mass curving space-time. Space-time is a conceptual medium. We went through this yesterday. Eventually, you talked through me at nausea, and I had to eject you, because you wouldn't accept that you had reified... described by Einstein you refuse to accept that that was a reification on your part yeah because it isn't what do you mean by conceptual medium what does that phrase mean it means that a medium would be something you can put stuff into in physical terms and conceptual means it only exists in your mind, your mind. So it's a medium, it's a medium that, only that only exists in your mind, in your mind. Him back, Huey. Back, Huey. Got, got back 
Well, that's the wrong <laughs> that's the wrong definition of medium. A medium isn't like a thing that you can put stuff into. That's not what medium means. I'm more concerned with the conceptual bit. Yeah, can you have concepts about things, Nathan? Yes, you can have a concept about what a car is, but then I can actually show you a physical, actual car. You can't show me a physical, actual gravity because it only exists as a concept. It's a conceptual medium. No, uh, Space-time is conceptual. It doesn't actually exist. There is no actual space-time. Time itself is a concept. So you're never going to show me space-time. And yesterday when we discussed this, you said it's all around you. And I explained, like love, Love can be described as being all around you, but it's just a concept. I can't give you some love. It's a metaphor if you want to describe touching somebody as giving them love, because love is a concept, like space-time. I can't a put a bow around it and present it to somebody. I can't present love. I can't present space-time. It's a concept. Can Simple. You be can you behave in a loving manner towards somebody? Say, for instance, your your spouse or your daughter? No, I just say this. Literally 10 seconds ago, I described that metaphor. Yeah, that's, I just, that's, yeah, that's a behavior. I, I, I'm nuts. I li literally not just say that 10 seconds ago. That that would be a metaphor. It's not an actualization of love. It's a metaphorical description of being in your now vernacular loving. Right, so, but that's not a box of love. So I can't behavior, weigh it. I can't qualify in any way, shape, or form. The only qualification I can give is for the physical interaction. And you can describe that as love by metaphor, but it's not. It's a concept. Like freedom. It's not a concept. It's an emotion. And you can behave in a loving manner towards the people. Hey, knucklehead. Knucklehead. Retard. Brenda. What he's trying to tell you is you can't physically manipulate a concept. Space-time is a concept. You can't bend it or dilate it. Do you space get time, it? Space-time is a concept that refers to an actual physical reality, which you can Oh, well, really? What's the physical reality? Show us. A space, which is extension, and time, which is duration. Uh, extension and t okay show us a box of each yeah any particle you can measure extension get oh a ruler no show and you us. can measure get them get a ruler and show measure us. extension you can measure show the width. us i want to see you bending time you can bend time by, tra oh, by traveling measure, measure yes. time measurement How about that ruler you, you measure time with clocks I'm time a ruler bring what what do really? clocks measure? What do clocks so we measure? measure a football field by a yardstick. So if I bend the yardstick, does the football field bend also? Uh, if you travel at light speeds, then the, uh, the measurement will be at different. Light speed down the drain. Is this so, scientific evidence? This is elementary uh, relativity. Is this can, scientific you, evidence? Yes. Oh, give me a moment. So you clocks measure time, yardsticks measure space. Those are real things. They're not imaginary. You can have concepts about real things. You can have concepts about real things, but that doesn't mean that you're reifying those concepts. Nathan, can you see my screen? In live it's not working for me Kiwi it's not working there's nothing coming up the join streams coming up on discord but the, there's no screen coming up Nathan can you see my screen no it's not working all right, all right. I'll, I'll jump out I'll jump in the hangout all right All right, so do you understand now, Nathan, that you can have concepts that refer to things? Space is ex extension. It's measured with yardsticks. Time is duration. It's measured with clocks. 
Right. So how do you now oh, measure no, space time? Because it is kind of I'm, a singular oh, just one thing. Second, Darwin. I'm that, holding my tongue. Realm. I'm holding my tongue because Kiwi's grabbed the reins. He's just swapping servers. Yeah, well, there's a pause. So okay. um, you can measure... The uh, there's not a pause. Sorry, Brenda. So, Brenda. Einstein uh, gravity. Go ahead, Nathan. That's it. I'm just trying to get control. Go ahead. So Einsteinian gravity. We want scientific evidence for that. Natural phenomena observed, please. Um, Einsteinian uh, general relativity postulates that uh, gravity is, ca uh, is caused phenomena of Earth, please. the bending of space-time. Don't give me general relativity. Natural phenomena observed, please. We're going to scientifically validate it. Yeah, the, the, the phenomenon that natural we observe phenomena. is is the bending of space-time. That's, that's the observation. Can you show it us then, please? Can you show us that? Yeah, that was in the Eddington Eddington experiment in 1909 about about light like, passing no, no, close no, no, no. to the sun. Brenda, 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 we're not at experiment stage, right? So I don't want to hear about experiment. We just want to hear about the phenomena. Now, in physics, it deals with the physical things that actually exist, physical things. Now, mathematics deals with the abstract. Not physical. Abstractions. Now we want to know first and foremost what's the actual thing we're dealing with. I dealt with it yesterday when I asked you to show me space time and you failed. You just told me it was all around me like love. And now we're asking what we can actually see, and your natural phenomena is something that's conceptual. Bending of space time. I can't bend time. Neither can you. You're not a time lord. You're not Doctor Who. None of us are going to be bending this concept. It's not physical, so we can't bend it. But you've got a natural phenomena of bending conceptual mediums, which you can't do. So you're not going to show me anything that's space-time, and you're certainly not going to show me bending it. It's purely conceptual, purely mathematical, not real, not physical, not a natural phenomena. A concept, Brenda. That's why you can't show it me and I can't manipulate it in any way. Uh, yeah, we can. Uh, so one test of relativity was Eddington's 1919 uh, uh, experiment about, you know, the sun deflecting Ed, the light Ed, of a star. Brenda, Brenda, stop, stop, stop. Right, the scientific method is set out very specifically. And the first step in the method is to observe a phenomena. The reason that's the first step is because the whole point of the process, the scientific method, is to elucidate the cause of an effect. An effect is a phenomena. So if you're going to try and figure out the cause of a phenomena, you first got to see a phenomena. I'm asking you where the phenomena is, and you're telling me about an experiment. Now, that's step three in the method. It's you trying to vary and manipulate something you think caused the effect and seeing if it actually does. That's an experiment. We're not there yet. Second time I've said this. It's going to get tedious if I have to repeat it a third and fourth time. The first step is to observe a phenomena. You've said space-time, and like yesterday, I've pointed out that you can't show it me. You just said it's all around me. And I've said, no, it isn't like love. It's a concept. So we're not going to go to an experiment to extract out a phenomena. That's step one. Experiment is step three. So don't give me a phenomena from an experiment. That's not how the method works. Please don't bastardize science. Just give us the phenomena. Oh, what's that? You haven't got space time to show us because it's a concept. Yes, we've already gone through this, Brenda. You just refuse to accept it because it's your religious belief. So you must reify it in the face of us pointing out that you can't physically show it us. Uh, space is extension and time is duration. Space is measured by... Show it to us. Shut up. You can just measure anything around you, Joe and it will have us. aspects of space and time. You put those two ideas together, you get space time. Aspects of space and time. Right so I measure something, and you're saying it's got aspects of space and time when I measure something with a ruler. So I measure something yeah. with a ruler, and then I've got to what? Reify the concept that that has got aspects of space and time in it? Both mathematical constructs that aren't in physical existence? What? I've got to reify those things, have I, Brenda, because you say so? Because you've got a religious belief that you reify? No, it's a concept, Brenda. 
That's why you can't show it us. And you're telling us about doing a measurement with a ruler and telling us about the concepts you reify in the form of space and time that are associated with making a measurement with a ruler. Now, there's no space time involved enough. I run a ruler down something. Space and time aren't in existence in physical terms. They're concepts. Oh, do you agree that length and breadth exist, don't you? Oh, yeah, Brenda, length and breadth. Sorry, those we don't real? have... Those are real, pseudo... aren't they? I'm sorry. Talking. We don't have pseudo romanian for space. Length, breadth, depth, and time. Well, the thing so you that measure... would be your Einstein... <laughs> Last chance. Talk over me again. I'm going to kick you out. Steinian edition of time a concept so then we end up with bending of length breadth depth and space time no brenda it's conceptual mathematical invented by einstein not real not physical not tangible a concept um you can measure a thing's length and breadth and it persists in time. Therefore, you're measuring its time. That's how time is measured by persistence. Okay. How by much time is there? It's duration. How much time? How much time is there in a cubic meter, please, Brenda? Uh, a cubic meter is space, not time. Sorry, you just told me when I run a ruler down something, time and space are factors I would be considering because you told me to because you reified those concepts. Now I'm asking you, given that you've told me specifically only two minutes ago that when measuring something, I will be factoring in space and time, according to you, you religious fundy zealot, how much time is in a cubic meter? As much time as it takes you to measure it. Because it doesn't blink out of existence. So, it doesn't so blink how out of existence. Time cubic meter depends on how good you are with a tape measure. You're no, a fool. No, that's Complete not what I said. It, that's, that's what you just said. How long it takes you to measure it. So yeah. how swift I am with a tape measure is dict dictatorial to how much space time there is in a cubic meter. You're insane. The object you're measuring persists in time, does it not? Sorry, how much time is there in that cubic meter yes if or I, no if i measure the, my table <laughs> it persists in time how much time is there in the volume of your table that's a non sequitur oh shit it's a fucking concept you daft bitch no fucking shit it's a non sequitur it's nonsensical because time's a concept and space time has been reified by you batshit crazy idiots so yeah, it's non sequitur. Has the penny finally dropped, you stupid idiot? Uh, I can measure the time uh, portion of a table by by measuring how long it on. persists. How long it persists in time? You can measure the time. Get someone write that down as a quote. I can measure the time proportion of a table. How yes, much yes. time is there in a table? Yes, I can. You yes, I can. Oh, oh, on that, I don't worry. <laughs> you never, you never cease to deliver I, better I know. idiot quotes. Brenda, better By, and better stupid I can every do that. time you come here. I, I can, can measure the amount of time in a table. Yes, I can. You're a complete By, retard. Do you have any idea how stupid you sound? By noting, by noting that it persists through Beyond time. You did, Brenda. It's, like, it's almost painful listening to you. By noting that the table persists in time, I am measuring its time dimension concept. The concept time is a concept so what because so, it persists in your reification of time what and the qualification you'll give with a clock and it's co cogs moving it's a concept so so let me explain this so if i say the table is in the kitchen and and how it's been there for three days I can give you the spatial component, which is length, breadth, and height, and the time component, component, which it's been there for three days. That's how you measure space well, and you time. You have already assigned how much it's spent in your kitchen rather than Home Depot, and that's how much space time it's got. You complete moron. You think that your arbitrary assignment of its time value is how much space time it's got. You thick, 
Like, literally, you're telling us how you square the circle by acquiring a table, and then the length of time it spends in your vicinity is its quantity of space-time based on its physical dimensions and duration in your presence. You complete retard. That's that's what science is, Nathan. It's that's a description. Science is, science is a description. Oh in this God. case, length, breadth, and duration. Cause and based on naturally observed phenomena it's not how much bloody brenda time there is in a table based on how much time it's spent in her kitchen this is nonsense that's not science you total moron you're just insulting us that's to that's why teaching your children flat earth is child abuse because you right, have these the stupid ideas children how dare she thou spew that us explaining to her that time's a concept about half a dozen different times and her telling us that she can qualify how much space time there is in a table is a justification for telling us that we abuse our children when we explain what level means no brenda never have children because it's not going to work out well for them with you telling them that a shoe is a phenomena yeah you would be abusing your children by telling them that science is telling them that a phenomena is a shoe or that you can qualify how much time there is in a table by how much time it's spent in your kitchen. Don't abuse children by ever talking them to, to them about anything ever, Brenda. Uh, you just by talking to children would be abuse. You not being able to understand the Kantian distinction uh, between the noumenal and the phenomenal it is irrelevant. Well, I know you don't to just add on this shit out of me, you complete retard. Don't ever talk to children. Your words will infect them and make them less able to be able to process things sensibly your presence around them will make them stupid so you're confused about the distinction between the noumenal and the phenomenal right that's your dis that's your confusion Immanuel kant made a distinction between the nominal and the you can measure the space time in a right. table like you're ridiculous you know, if you yeah. just, you're not even well, it probably only would work if there was a donut on the table, though. <laughs> but, but Brenda, but, was it, but the the donut, the hole in the donut was space time, wasn't it, Brenda? So now yeah, you have yeah, yeah, it's composed of space time in the table and in the hole in the donut. Hmm. How does that work? I I hear there's this artist that actually, uh, what is it? Plasters edibles into tables. Maybe that has something to do with it. Can we get back to the actual statement Bev made? Level is a straight line on a horizontal plane. That is not teaching flat earth. That is talking about what level is. Is that child abuse? Yeah, that's not the definition of level. Level means perpendicular to the surface of the earth. Bring that up. Can you post that in the um, live stream? You want to post that in live stream? Let's see where you got that from. Uh, let's go ahead and share screen. Let's go over level. Oh, boy. All right. Right. Citation, Brendan? Uh, it looks like Q's No, we're going to go over it. level right here. Uh, okay. I got it for Level is flat. They're mutually exclusive. Le from Merriam-Webster, level to make a line or surface horizontal. To make flat or level. Synonyms. Even, flat, flush, plain. These are all Merriam-Webster. Level, flat, plain, even, smooth means having a surface without bends, curves, or irregularities. Let's get some more. Dictionary.com. Level, having no part higher than another. Having a flat or even surface. Level, being in a plane parallel to the plane of the horizon. Horizontal. Level, to make a surface level even or flat. From Cambridge, level, not rising or falling or higher on one side, but even in all directions, horizontal or flat. Level, something that is level with something else is at the same height. Level, to make a surface flat. There you go. Yeah, I'm using the physics definition, number 10 under Wick under the Wiktionary entry, it's the physical, the physics definition used by physicists means uh, physics perpendicular right. to to gravity. That's what that's what level means on, in physics. Can you please cite that? Can you post please that. please cite that? Yeah, post it. I said I, 
Thanks. I said it's in in Wiktionary, and it's a tenth, we, the sorry. Can can definition. I just yeah? Would that be a plumb bob though? That that would be a perpendicular to a vertical, would it? That, like a plumb bob is that is that how you would say whatever you you're saying? Would would a plumb bob tell you the direction of what you're talking about? The plumb bob indita- indicates the direction of gravity. Yes. And would that would that be a vertical? Uh, it's it's a vertical line that would indicate and that the surface you you put the yeah, plumb so what's, to what's, is level. Brenda, what's what's per, what's perpendicular to a vertical, please? It's not per, it's not perpendicular to a vertical. That's not what it is. But what was it perpendicular to then, please? To gravity. You just said the, the gravity is a plumb bob, is it? Gravity is not a plumb no, bob. No, gravity. Hold on, QE. Just just Bev and Brenda, please. Gravity is not a plumb bob. Oh, so what? How would you um, determine what you call that thing? The direction of so a plumb gravity. bob. A plumb bob would indicate the direction of gravity. Of right? Which right. way? So what would what that would be vertical, wouldn't it? Because that, so, that's what a plumb bob is in you know in reality. A, pl- a plumb when, bob when indicates it. indicates the direction of gravity, right? A vertical, yeah. Just keeps on saying the same thing over and over again. Gravity. We just went over gravity, right? It's, there is no gravity. It's a vertical, isn't it? it that's wait, what a plumb bob does, Brenda. Wait, and perpendicular to no vertical is a horizontal, isn't it? So even in your statement, you are saying horizontal. You do realize that, don't you? The uh, the way you would measure if something is level is by using a. You would use. A, a carpenter's level, right? And you would align it with, say, the uh, the the two by four, the piece of wood, and it would be perpendicular because it would it would line up. The bubble would line up between the two marks, right? It would indicate that it is perpendicular you, to the force of gravity. Changed. The plumb bob, the plumb bob indicates the direction of uh, that that is towards the center of the earth. It doesn't exist. Oh, of Brenda, we covered this yesterday. Gravity is not a force. Yeah, that's a that's a vertical. You just said it, Brenda. Yeah. Sorry, hold on, Bev. We covered this yesterday, Brenda. You said it was perpendicular to the force of gravity. Gravity is not a force. We went over this yesterday. It is. It's. It's a vector. Gravity is a vector. Brenda, Brenda, <laughs> Brenda. <laughs> we covered this on this show. Space time is a concept. No, it's not. It's physical. And and it gives it, is. it gives a vector is. space space. Brenda, may I remind you that you've told us that the amount of time in a particular area, in this case, an example, a table, is the amount of time it spends in your kitchen. So let's not be <laughs> qualifying how real space time is when you can't show us beyond a qualification of how much time a table spent in your kitchen. That's not really scientific evidence of gravity. And gravity is qualified by your priests as not a four. So this plumb bob is definitely not perpendicular to the force of gravity. Let's just get that clear. Feel free to continue, Bev. Okay, no, the... so uh, no, see, a plumb bob is a tool in, in reality that is used by people. Yeah. And what, what it does is... What, what does it indicate? What does it indicate, Bev? What does a, vertical, vertical, what is, vertical, what does a plumb Brenda. bob indicate? A vertical, it, Brenda. Right. It indicates the direction of gravity, right? No, a vertical. Brenda, Brenda, yes. Brenda, yes. Brenda, Brenda, Brenda. I'm going to kick you out. You didn't acknowledge what I said. We said it to you yesterday. It's not a force. Your own priests say, George Musa, quote, gravity is not a force. Now, you can think of it as a force. You can. That doesn't mean it is or that anything's being forced perpendicular to anything else with this force because it's not a force. Now, I appreciate that you're following instructions from George Musa. You're thinking of it as a force because he told you to. Now, we're not being told by George Musa to think of gravity as a force. We can think of it as roast chicken, but we're not going to be. Now, you are, and we're telling you, it's not a force. It's a concept you've reified. Stop asserting this. If you say it a third time, I'll kick you out because you're wrong. Nothing's being forced perpendicular to anything by gravity. You are wrong. It's not a force. Uh, gravity is not a force. It is the bending of space-time, which gives 
objects within uh, the gravitational so field a vector. vector. We don't need to rehash this, Brenda. Brenda, we don't need to rehash this. We discussed it earlier. We don't need you to reify all over us how you take this concept of space-time and tell us that we've got a gravity well with an assumed R-value sphere Earth being pulled to the bottom of it. Your concepts and ideas about how the world works don't bother us because they're not physical and actual and real. And you don't have a force pulling this plumb bob perpendicular. So let's just move on with Bev's point, not spew back into your concepts of space-time. You don't need to hear it. Your fantasies are irrelevant. We're talking about things being perpendicular. Go ahead, Bev. Well, I think it's pretty simple. Like, a, a perpendicular is um, defined within Euclidean geometry as um, a line that meets another line, a straight line that meets a straight line... Um, at right angles. Would you agree with that, Brenda? Uh, yeah, that's what it means. At right angles to... A straight, so one straight line has to meet another straight line perpendicular, right? Yeah, so eye level, yeah. eye level would it. be an example, right? An example of what? Sorry. What you just said. A perpendicular... Eye level would be an example of perpendicular. Yes, right. Correct. How? You don't understand that? What? You don't understand that? I don't you just explained it. What are you talking about? How can you not understand that? Oh, no, no. Confusion. Brenda. He's not agreeing with you. Hold on, Bev. He's, he's asking you for further qualification as opposed to agreeing with you, Brenda. Well, see, so he said, okay, so I can explain that. Uh, so perpendicular means at right angles, right? To, to the force of gravity, to the pulling of the force of gravity. Wait, listen, so I level, get her out. I level is I'll perpendicular. Get her out. Yeah, get her out of here. Bev. <laughs> so, yeah. Hey, Bev, we should debate <laughs> sometime. We should debate sometime. <laughs> yeah, I don't you, think it'll be a bit debate. Like with it. See, see Brenda. Now. All right, Bev's in agreement that you're going to be I, kicking. I destroy you. I destroy you. <laughs> yeah, you're an yeah, imbecile. Yeah. Brenda, on these occasions, I've told you not to your reification of gravity being a force. And every time it comes to you describing something being perpendicular, you insert your reified force. Now, it's also been explained to you that this is Euclidean, three space. So there's no space time. There's no fourth dimensional time in this. But you're utilizing fourth dimensional space time in the form of gravity. It's just been explained to you. Not gravity. Not pseudo Ramonian force space. Euclidean three space. But you've agreed and then substituted in a completely different mathematics to give you a non-force. So, bye-bye, Brenda. You've done it three times. I've now explained why you're not 